What up, players? It's Warpass Tay up in this mode. Today I'm going to show you how I paint up my spirit host for the Vampire Counts Mortis Engine slash Coven Throne. Um, once we get into the rest of the kit, it's going to start being pretty specific to, you know, the, the Mortis Engine that I'm planning on building. But if you want to achieve this kind of standard for your for your spirit host, you could use it for either Mortis Engine or Coven Throne, or also use it for your Banshees. Um, although I'm gonna have a bit on the Banshees later, so uh, this is the effect we're kind of going for: this ghostly green, uh, greenish, bluish with uh, white kind of spectral, very, very uh, Dickens-esque uh, with with the with the sculpts and the the coloring. So. <laughs> And just the way it's trailing these like ethereal gases and whatnot. So very exciting. Um, and I painted up one side. This is kind of like my test model, I guess. So once we get to the other side, it's really going to um, you'll really be able to see how we do it step by step. But you'll notice that the finished product has tones of blue, green, and for the armor, you've got some blue as well as uh, a nice light brownish kind of for the for all the metal I mean not just the armor but like for the weapon it's nice kind of corroded metal look to it so I'm gonna show you how I achieve that I'm gonna be following the white dwarf model that <laughs> uh, look at this Karen Reed. he's like ah. <laughs> um, the white dwarf model that they painted back in white dwarf number uh, 2012 January white dwarf number 384 January 2012 so it's the same color scheme which means it's the old paints these aren't the new fancy fancy paints uh, but if you want to convert your colors over to the new ones yeah look at how that armor just looks really gross and corroded with a little bit of different wash mixtures um, then you can do that as well so stay tuned and uh, hope you guys enjoy this little tutorial Okay, so the first thing we do is we prime our model. I always prime my models mostly with this duplicolor matte gray, and um, it makes the models look like I didn't prime them, um, which actually I think is good because it helps me to to pick out the detail. Whereas if I did it all in black or all in white, my eyes would be so jarred by the uh, really really stark contrast or um, color that it would be hard for me to pick out the contrast. So with gray. Um, I actually picked up this trick reading the old Citadel Miniatures book. It said that uh, <clears throat> most people prime in white or black, but some people prime in gray to pick out details. I think it said that in the last Citadel Miniatures book. I could just be making that up. I don't know. I'm getting old. I'm an old man. All right. First thing we're going to use is Astronomicon Gray. Not sure what the equivalent is currently with the new range, but that's what um, that's what we're going to use. So we're just going to basically cover this entire model with it. So you want to use a brush that is able to cover large surfaces. I'm using a Games Workshop, um, uh, I think it's called a large, what is this, large brush? No, base coat brush. No, no, this is a large brush. I'm sorry, they also have a base coat brush which um, could you, you could use, but this I'm using the large brush. and. Uh, how are we doing on the focus, Igor? Very good, master. That's good. So, the the worst thing to do is to, to leave any bits, um, especially in the shadows, unpainted. So uh, you're going to need to be turning it at all different angles while you're painting it to make sure you get it in all the shadows. Also have your cup of water nearby and your wet palette so that you can um, thin down the paints while you're working. Since you're not mixing any paints at this point, um, you can really just add like a drop of water to the brush tip after you put the tip into the paint. That's what I do because this, this old foundation paint is uh, can get pretty thick otherwise and then if you just paint it on and do kind of a dry brushing, I found it gives me this very, uh, I guess, dusty look. 
<clears throat> well, well, well. Look what we have here. Oh, good morning, Lewis. War boss Tay, I, I thought you were doing some lame old empire figures. What, what are you doing painting up this mortise engine? Uh, I don't know. I was just thinking maybe it's time to get it done. Woke up the other night and uh, it was all built up, so I just thought, hey, you know, let's, might as well get this thing done. Boy, ain't that the darndest thing? I'm glad you finally start to see some reason. Good thinking, critical thinking skills. Thank you. <laughs> so as you can see, I kept the spirit host separate. Uh, I think the painting guide for for the when when the heavy metal guy did this model, he glued them together. But um, yeah, it'd be hard to reach like the, the insides for me. I think so. I was like, you know, better safe than sorry. <coughs> Let's just play it safe and keep them. Gotta keep them separated. As they say, as the kids say nowadays. So, um. There's this website called therealgiantbomb.com And, uh, oh, come on, Igor, stay in frame. I'm sorry, master. But this spirit host is so large and unwieldy, you can't keep it all in focus. Uh, this website, <coughs> they're like a video game website. And, uh... Like, just a bunch of guys that sit around playing video games, it seems like. Uh, and they write video commentaries and whatnot, and reviews and, and all that stuff, but... I don't even know how I found them. But I started watching this thing they do called the Endurance Run. And they've done it for two video games so far that I, I really like, which are... Uh, Persona 4... And the other one is called Deadly Premonitions. And... It's super funny. It's really, really funny. Um, all they do is play video games in like, you know, almost like 45 minutes to hour long segments. Like my videos. And, um, yeah, they just, they just do commentary, but they're really fast on their feet. They're witty, they're super smart and funny. And I was like thinking to myself, man, that'd be such a cool place to work. Just do video game commentary. Uh, but if you're, yeah, if you're ever getting, you know, sick and tired of watching these videos, or you're not interested in whatever I'm painting, and nothing else in your subscriber feed is looking good to you, then I totally suggest heading down to GiantBomb.com. They also do a, they also have a YouTube channel, so you can find them there. Yeah, to put some water on my brush. That's right. So like things with like the bones, uh, cloth, you just kind of want to cover everything at this point. We're going to pick out the metal later, but um, I'm just going, you know, for going for broke, trying to hit as much as I can. And uh, my lamp is in the way, so I can't really tell if Igor is in focus or not, or if he's slacking on his job. Cause he's on his phone. I'm sorry, master. I'm playing words with friends. Igor, you don't have any friends. Of course I do, master. Okay, who do you play words with friends with? My good friend, 
Marius von Perfufelsteinhagen Stein. See, you don't even know his name. Neuve, do you? That's not true. Of course, I know Marius's name. Oh, yeah? What is it? <coughs> uh, why? Of course, it's um. Marius. You. Yeah. <coughs> Von. Um, per. Go clean your room. Oh. What if I clean my room? Who's going to operate the camera? That's a good question. Operate the camera? Lewis. What? I know all about operating these newfangled things. What do you know about operating the Canon T2i? Camera. Well. Heck, I know lots. Like for instance, all you gotta do to uh, to make things look centered and focused in the frame is press this little button. How was I supposed to know that button was gonna turn off the camera? <clears throat> okay, so uh, while Lewis was trying to fix the camera, I um, kind of kept going and finished my base coat. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to add a mixture of oh, one third hot turquoise and two thirds of sermon blue, if that's possible. Uh, and the mixture you should come out with is going to look like a very dark teal and you want it to be really watery because it's going to be a wash. And um, I like to do it on my soft, uh, on my wet palette. Woo! I also have done it before on the um, in the cup of water, my water cup, like on the rim, and just have it use it while it's running down the sides, because uh, that way the water is right there, so you could just add more water to make it more of a wash. I've also heard that using the glaze, the new glaze medium from Games Workshop, is a good way of doing it as well. But basically you want something of a really, really of like a wash consistency. You know, it's just going all the pores and recesses and shadows. Watch out that when you're painting this, uh, sometimes the, the wash tends to miss large areas um, in the shadows and when you're, when you're doing angles. So you just want to be careful. But yeah, when I was painting up my, um, my test model, I was watching the endurance run for Deadly Premonition and, ah, oh, it's so funny, those guys. Jeff and, and Vinny is super funny. Highly suggest going there. I like to watch Let's Plays because if I'm not painting Warhammers, I like to play video games. So it's almost like I'm getting a little bit of both. Some funny commentary is always super fun.
Sorry, this thing is, you know, this part of the model is so unwieldy. Same uh, problem happened when I was painting my corpse cart. The focus is all over the place. Then at about halfway through the model, you can add or take out some more Assurman Blue, depending on your taste. Uh, and really try to stick to the, the shadows if you can with it. And I'm basically putting the paint on, then loading up my brush with water and then putting it back down it saves time from having to build it all up with the new GW medium but um, if you do it a separate way a different way or if you've heard about doing it a different way you can do it that way as well like I said before we're gonna paint the metal uh, silver but it might be good to just hit the whole of the shields and the weapons with your colors just to get um, just to get the color on it. Then you can always clean it up later when we're doing the touch-ups. See, the white dwarf says to just use this mix, but. I find it's actually more fun if you play around with the blues. So some parts it's dark, like up here at the top, and some parts it's more green and teal. Then the, the viewer's eye gets to transition the colors back and forth and it's more, more interesting. Do any of you know, have they made a new um, wash that kind of combines a Sermon Blue and Hawk Turquoise instead of a straight... Like a Sermon Blue is really blue. It's like they took Regal Blue and just made it really watery and added in some, like, uh, just another dark color, like Necron Abyss to it. Um, but I really like the, the teal of Hawk Turquoise. So I'm going to be painting up to a certain point and then I'm stopping just because you know, I don't want to get paint on my fingers. But what you could do is just wait for one part to dry and then go back with, like hold that part and then paint the rest of it. I'm not, not going to paint the back, just repeat the back how, how I did at the front. Then you can do that on your own. So you kind of want your models to look a little bit like that. And see what I mean? The, the wash kind of didn't really go into the hole here. So you got to kind of do some minor touch up and clean up as you're going before it dries. even though we're not painting the weapons and armor, we're gonna uh, paint it a different color. You might wanna paint it this blue just in case. 
so that you don't skip or miss anything when we go back later on. Okay, I'm gonna finish and um, we'll be right back. Okay, so after our wash has dried, our mixture of Assyrian Blue and Hot Turquoise, the next thing we're going to do, the next step is we're going to dry brush Astronomicon Grey. And uh, these next couple of steps, I guess you would call them steps 3, 4, 5, are just basically um, progressive highlights. We're going to get lighter, work our way up all the way to Skull White. So. What I'm doing is I'm wiping off most of the most of the paint and then making sure that I only have a little bit on my brush. And then I'm just going to dry brush the paint on. I'm focusing really on the raised areas as much as as much as I can. You don't want it like everywhere, but I'm trying to think if, if this was at night and um, and it was pitch black and my unit was walking in the moonlight, then where would the moon be picking up the light on these models? And that's where I try to focus my dry brushing on. It's pretty cheesy and, and tacky, but um, for me it works. And the thing with dry brushing is you don't want to get too crazy and get it on everything, on every surface, because this is just the first of three stages of dry brushing. So want to save some some room to get even lighter sorry about that I like the spooky uh, Nazgul, no face kind of Karen Wraith. That's pretty cool. Ebenezer. Reminds me of the, I don't know why, but the Haunted Mansion over in Disneyland. I used to love that thing when I was a kid. What I have to do after I'm painting this? 
Uh, oh yeah, Igor still needs a paint job. Um, gotta unbox the Hell Knights. I hear those are pretty cool to do. It's a lot of projects lined up. Sorry, uh, thought I'd be able to get more work done, but, you know, life. You want to start thinking ahead because we're going to be um, painting the metals up, like weapons and armor and stuff, so um, when it comes to the lances, what they, the heavy metal team did, which I think is pretty, pretty cool, is that they highlighted, or they made the the staff of the lance, the bottom part, down here, as if it were this ghostly eth ethereal material, and then they only made the tip metallic, so that's what we'll do too, we'll kind of copy that. <clears throat> and don't worry if you mess up the barding, because most of the barding on the spectral horses are going to be in uh, metal. We're just painting it right now, just so that we have even coverage over everything. Do you want to make sure that you get the the cloth, anything that's cloth, or the spectral uh, bones and whatnot? All these wisps of smoke. <laughs> yeah, and like I said in the unboxing video, this is such a such a detailed kit. They're getting better and better. I remember when the Arachnorok came out, I was like, how could anything top this? And it was just the beginning. Ooh, too much paint. Yeah, that's the thing, you could really mess yourself up if you have too much paint on. And then to fix it, all you really need to do is just go back with the, you know, the wash, but in order to make this hawk turquoise and a sermon blue mix, you have to get the right consistency and mixture. It could get a little tedious. But you see what I mean, if this was glued together, you'd have a really hard time doing this part, so I think the instructions kind of suggest doing doing this part in a sub-assembly rather than gluing the whole thing together, so that's another thing I'm really happy that Games Workshop does now with its kits, is they say when when you should and when you shouldn't um, build something in a sub-assembly for painting So we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to mix um, Skull White into our Astronomicon Gray, about half, half, half. So a one-to-one -one mixture of Astronomic Gray and Skull White, then do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna skip to the, the last part. You do the exact same thing, and then you let that dry for a little bit, like I'm letting it dry right now. And then the third time, you do it again, but only with pure Skull White. And each time you do um, add a layer, you want to paint even less areas with your highlight so that so that it really picks up. For example, instead of going over the whole thing, like I just did with the astronomic on gray, with this half and half mix, say I'll only go down here on the robes, and then I'll kind of stick to the bone. Up. Oh, sorry about that. I'll only stick to the, we the weapons, and only stick to bone pieces so that the bones really stand out, rather than paint all of the, all of the wisps of gas, I'm only going to paint what would be normally a bone color, so the skeletons and the, um, the, the floating skulls, 
And that way, the person who's looking at your model, their eye is drawn really to what you highlight. So you're not using the second and the third highlights don't take as long as the first one, basically. Then you can add a couple of just when you're when the paint has almost run out completely to the surrounding areas, just to blend and tie them in. Yeah, so maybe I won't skip just to show you how I'm focusing now on just the bone rather than the whole thing. So the backs of the skulls, bony areas, these guys up at the front. So this way they really stick out from what's around them. The horses. We kind of leave this ethereal ghostly gas kind of still in that blue-green haze, already picking up the rest. And then once the paint is mostly all gone on your brush, then you can just flick the remainder on the surrounding area just to tie everything together. Okay, and the last piece we're going to do, yeah, that looks really good, is we're going to take pure skull white and do the exact same thing. Okay, so I've just finished my skull white highlight, and you can kind of tell when you let's zoom in, when you look at the bone, you can kind of see the difference in the tone from this, uh, this highlighted skull over here and this one over here to the area around it, which is nice and dark. So, um, moving on to our next step, we are going to. Uh, wash the recesses now with our original mix, the same thing, hawk turquoise and a sermon blue. We mix the two colors together, a one-to-one -one consistency, and then we're going to water it down, and we're going to paint that right into all of the little dips and shadows. And this time we're going to hand paint it on rather than um, just slapping it on the whole thing. So I'm going to choose where they go and I'm going to choose the area around areas around the skeletons so that the eye is naturally a little bit more attracted to all that. Is this, is this what you would call negative space in art? I don't know. That's never good in art class. I should probably go back. But the negative space is, or what I'm calling negative space, is really what defines where the eye is going to look. So we want to tie it into uh, the what we've already done so we have to get it a little bit closer so everybody can see and focus you where you can fix if you made any mistakes earlier. It's also just to let you play with the play with your brush and find find the parts that you want to um, highlight by painting the areas around them. And the white door says really stick to the um, recesses and the shadows but personally myself I think doing what I said 
is going to give you a more satisfying result. Especially if you're not, not um, comfortable, if you're not experienced with the, with the shading, or the, the highlighting, I mean the dry brushing. Shading like this will restore some of that confidence by cleaning up some of that quote-unquote dusty highlighting where it ends up looking kind of like um, like the white paint was dusted on. It's funny, I have a friend named Dusty in real life. Or IRL, as they say. Okay. Sometimes you can't really see the sermon blue. So I'm going to kind of do this to the other side, um, basically I'm just coloring recesses like here, like this cloth is really good because you can see the dramatic difference. So that's kind of the effect I'm going for. So we'll see you back when this next section is finished. Alright, so after we've got that wash in the recesses, we are going to do a little bit of a green wash into the really deep recesses, recesses, and I'm actually going to be using, you can use the old uh, Thraka green, but I do have this in my collection now, BL10 green, so <clears throat> we're going to try that. When they wrote the guide, they had Thrack of Green in mind, so we're going to see how well this BL10 green does. And with this, you only want to go in the really deep, shadowy areas, areas that already have lots of this dark, a sermon bluish kind of highlight already. So this is not as, I want to say it's not as dark but it's more of a vibrant wash than Thraka Green was. So let's take a look at on the other model. See the other model it came out a little bit lighter, um, but it's okay, that's okay. Because I did Thraka Green on the other model, so when, when this is dry, we'll take a little look, we'll compare, and we'll... Uh, yeah, we'll see which, which one we like the best. So, like I said, don't don't highlight or don't don't wash in any of the highlighted areas, but you can really stick to the the darker ones that already have some blues in it. it creates this really nice effect. Dark green and the dark blue. Very um very haunted, spooky, dark magic kind of of feel. Stupid pot stay open. So let's see if we can get the one over here by the skull. Boop. Oops, that's a lot in by accident. That's okay. So I like it, I might go back over my, um, the other side of this spirit host and redo the green over there because 
the dark, uh, kind of, the dark green kind of looks, looks good. It's, like I said, it's just really vibrant. And if you don't like it, just don't use it. Okay, you definitely don't want to use it as much as the, um, as the blue. It's really like an accent color. That looks pretty spiffy. So I'm going to do the other side and then we'll come back and then in the next section we will talk about the metallics. So getting on to the metallics, chainmail. And this is mostly weapons and armor and barding for horses. So I'm going to start here in the back. Hey, war boss, how's my spirit host coming? It's, it's going well, Lewis. It's good because, uh, I got a hot date tonight. I like to take it out for a spin, if you know what I mean. Lewis, I don't think we're going to be done tonight. This is a huge model with lots of intricate detail. What? Well, well, what am I supposed to ride to on my date then? Uh, I don't know. How about maybe your corpse cart? You haven't been driving that around. Well, well of course not. I mean, it's 2011. Lewis, you are being very ungrateful right now. Ah, shucks. At least you're getting a tutorial. I'm still on the side and nobody's painted me yet. Oh, Igor, don't start. What well, all I'm saying is that I would like to be painted at some point as well. You're going to be. A lot of people are waiting for the Igor tutorial. I'm just, I'm just really busy right now. You're painting up all the Lewis's stuff. Is this a democracy? Are we living in a democracy in this in this house? No, this is my channel. So you guys just take what I paint for you, all right? Yeah, all right. So the back is not really too hard because you don't really have too much metallics to worry about. It's the front when you get to the barding and all of that. So the barding is the biggest area. So I'm gonna hit that first. This is when you really want to just be sure that when you're painting, 
some good focus there, that you are able to turn the model around different ways. Don't get frustrated if you can't reach or hit a certain detail with your paintbrush because chances are there's another angle that would work even better that you just haven't tried out yet. Oh, I was watching my videos and you know what I realize that I do and I don't even notice that I'm doing it and I find it I don't want to say super annoying but I just it's kind of off-putting when I watch other people on YouTube and listen to their voices and and then they kind of do this thing where it sounds like they're uh, they're, they're gargling marbles and they're talking down like this and uh, I just don't like how people's voices sound when they talk down here. So I'm saying to myself, okay, I gotta really focus on how I talk. Think about think about using my diaphragm and my my vocal box apparatus correctly. Oops. I paint this guy's sword down here. I mean I forgot to paint this guy's sword down here. <sighs> it's harder than it looks, folks. I love these models too. The, the barding for the horses. The way they made it look very... just... very gothic horror. These um, plates for the the horses seem almost like like bat wings. Reminds me of the night lords helmet crests. Makes me wonder, Fluffwise, did they do this for? Um, just once they... <laughs> is it the, the, the dark magic that's doing it and warping their the barding of their knight's horses that used to be pretty regular and normal or did the old Sylvanian military incorporate these gothic style barding for their horses to make them look like just evil, evil creatures? I'm inclined to think later. It's almost kind of sad because already shaded, the barding looks so cool, but don't worry, don't worry, we'll come back. We'll shade it again, make it look just as cool. I mean, we'll make it look just as cool. And like I said earlier in the video, we're only gonna paint the spear tips. Boot. Oh, that's way too much paint. Boot. Oh, be careful with these spears too. Man, my other one, I noticed that it was starting to bend when I had put the the piece down, the spirit host test model down. Um, it was leaning against something that made it start to bend at a funny angle and when I picked it up again just now, the stupid thing broke off. Uh, the spear tip broke like right in the center, so I had to plastic glue that thing back on and that's just a super big hassle. Pain. Just be careful about that. Breastplates for the knights in the front. All the knights in the front have breastplates, so you want to make sure you paint that up nice and metallic, as well as their helmets. We're going to assume that the horns for both helmets 
are made out of some creature's horns and not fashioned out of metal. So we will not paint those. We're also not going to paint the scale skirts because in my mind on the painted model they are actually red on the Black Knights. So just to keep consistent, if, they're, if it's not like a silver metallic material you don't have to paint it. So I'm not going to paint the scales. Also, I don't like, I don't want to paint too much silver on these guys because they're skeletons, not necrons. I mean, they're skeletons, not necrons. Okay, let this dry for a while, then we're going to come back, do some washes, and wrap this baby up. I think we're getting up on like 40 minutes already, so if you're still with me, thanks for staying, and uh, we'll see you in just a little bit. Right, in the last part of the video, we're taking our sermon blue, and we are washing the metal pieces. So starting from the back again. You want to leave some of that uh, metallic pigment shining through, but overall, you are pretty much just covering all of it. Actually, covering isn't really an accurate word. Uh, glazing would be a better word. So if you have the blue glaze, is there a blue glaze? I think there's a blue glaze. Then you can use that instead. <clears throat> cover the metal completely. The point is just to, um, the point is just to get some of this blue tinge onto the silver. on his left side, We've got the right side of the chainmail, so yeah, I'll go back and hit that. I'm gonna hit that. What are we gonna hit? Nothing. Nothing, Lewis. Lewis is... a very active, older gentleman, let's say. You're darn right I am. I like the ladies. Oh, that might be a little much. The great thing about using this wash now at this point is that because we've already we already have so much blue and green elsewhere, it's it doesn't pop out at all, which is good. I think when you look at the model, you don't really want to see too much detail in the spirit host, just because there's so much detail you want the eye to kind of be drawn more towards the, the mortise engine itself. There. <laughs> you can kind of see that. Let's get the chain mail now. <laughs>
There we go. And um, while this is drying, we're going to prep our last color in this tutorial. Griffon sepia, or whatever the new sepia is. So once all this blue is dry, we're going to come back and we're going to paint. We're going to stain it, stain some of this armor griffin sepia. Okay, so like I said, we're taking our griffin sepia now, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding little, little patches of uh, decay and, and rust to our spectral silver metal. So, uh, interesting concept, since, you know, it's supposed to be eth ethereal, but um, it, it, it looks really good when it's done, so who am I to judge? So, I'm just putting on little patches, little patches of this so, uh, griffin sepia into the different areas. Really, uh, really good with the rivets. So, in the barding or on the um, on the spines of the metal armor, it shows up really nicely there as well. In uh, any rust pockets, definitely. So, like if you see any decay or rust streaks, it's like the. Uh, body and the, the bones didn't survive going through the transformation process of becoming ethereal but the, the metal the metal stayed what am I talking about I'm so hungry would you like me to fetch you a sandwich master uh, no, Igor, because the last time I let you make me a sandwich, I ended up with one less cat. <laughs> it's not funny. It was a delicious sandwich, though. Yeah, it was alright. I thought it was quite gamey, to be honest. Of course, that's just the cat meat, Lewis. So, Lewis, have you uh, given any thought to what you're going to name these? Your your spectral helpers here? Of course not. Why would I name them? Uh, you know, so whoever you're taking out doesn't think that you're just some stuck-up pig that doesn't know his help. Oh, you really think she'd care about something like that? Well, I don't know. We could put it up to the uh, community. Ask people if, uh, especially girls, if you think Lewis should name his, <laughs> his spectral helpers here. It might be fun and interesting. All right, so that's all that is really just you're just looking for little spots You're not really covering a lot and um, we're just looking for that that tinge of, of decay On all the metal So there you go, and um, I don't think I'm just not sure I don't want to glue it and then have to end up, you know Ungluing it later, but let's just stick these pieces together and see what they'll look like when we do glue it in the final video. There we go. So this is what it'll look like all put together. Let's zoom out just a tad and get the focus set. So thanks for watching. Woo, this is very cool, very interesting. I hope you like this how to paint a spectral spiritual host video. Um, stay tuned for more as we paint up more of the Mortis engine. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.